everyone, it's Ashley with Southern Sewing Company. Welcome back to my channel. Can you believe we are already over halfway done with our beginning quilting series? All we have to do at this point is to quilt and to bind and we're done. We are one step closer to finishing our quilt and this week is all about using our walking foot. If you're new to quilting, I'm gonna show you how to install your walking foot on your machine. I'm also gonna walk you through a few ideas like how to start and stop quilting, stitch length, and then we're gonna walk through a few different designs that you can achieve with your walking foot step-by-step. Step. Stay tuned till the end to see which design I've chosen to finish my quilt. So without further ado, let's get to quilting. Before we get started, one of the main things that you're gonna need other than your walking foot is some quilting gloves. These are something that I didn't know about when I first started quilting, but it makes all the difference. Quilting gloves are designed with these little gripping dots to make it easier to hold on to your quilt for free motion quilting and even using your walking foot. Definitely invest in these. They're maybe eight or nine dollars. I'll leave a link in the description box below, but they're totally worth it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is install our walking foot on our machine. This is what I have. It's kind of dirty. It's seen better days. I'm going to show you how to install this on my sewing machine and I would assume it's not much different for yours. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our key, um, sometimes it's a screwdriver or something, it's, sometimes it's something similar, and we're going to remove the current foot that we have on here by using our turn key and pulling down this or pulling out this screw on the side here and removing our current presser foot. So we're gonna put this to the side, we don't need it for a while. Definitely make sure that your presser foot is in the up position. But we're gonna put our walking foot underneath, slide it up so it's connected to the needle bar. And see this lever here? It looks different on different machine, on different quilting feet, like this is for my other machine, and it has like a claw almost, which is always funny to me. But two things need to happen. Number one, the quilting foot needs to come onto the presser foot bar right here, and then this lever has to go above your needle. So you almost need to do that first, and it's always kind of a tricky game here to get it on here perfectly right. But once your walking foot bar is over your needle bar here, then you can press up all the way. And then we're gonna tighten our screw. So definitely make sure you're, you're pushing up all the way while you're tightening your screw. So our walking foot is attached at this point, and this is what it looks like. So now that we've got our walking foot attached, I'm gonna show you how to start and stop quilting. If we were to just start sewing, so for example, we just wanna start sewing. What it's, what's gonna happen is we're going to get this ugly little nest of thread on the back of our fabric. But this is something that we want to avoid. It doesn't look very nice on the back of our quilt. There's two ways you can alleviate this. Number one, if you are doing a design like straight line quilting or anything from edge to edge, I don't tend to worry about the little nest and I'll simply start quilting off of my quilt top. So I would start back here and then continue on. When I'm ready to stop, I'll take one or two stitches in place and then cut my threads. And then that's all. And then it'll also leave this little, little tails in the back and I'll just cut those off. If I'm starting off of my quilt, I don't really worry about this little nest. If you plan to start quilting in the middle of your quilt, if you run out of bobbin thread and you had to stop midline, to start quilting in the middle of your quilt, we are going to actually pull up the bobbin thread. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. So with my left hand, I'm gonna hold the thread from my needle. I'm gonna place my foot down wherever I wanna start quilting. I'm gonna rotate my hand crank towards me in one full rotation so that my needle comes back to the top. If I pull up, you can see my bobbin thread just got pulled up too. So I'm gonna grab this. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. And now I have two threads in my hand. I have the needle thread and then I have the bobbin thread. So from here, I will take a couple stitches, back stitch, and then start again. 
So these threads are safe to cut whenever you're ready, and then you can continue sewing on. On other quilting sites, you might see people bring the needle up, lift their presser foot up, and leave these long tails. And then from here, they pull both threads to the back, tie it off, and then hide this. However, that's a little too much for me. <laughs> so now that we know how to start and stop our quilt sandwich, we're gonna talk about stitch length. So as you can see, this is what my dial looks like for my stitch length, and each of these numbers refers to millimeters. So we kind of went over this while we were piecing our quilt together. The longer the stitch length, the longer your stitches are gonna be. And since we're going through an entire quilt sandwich, you automatically need to set it a little longer. So I'm gonna show you the differences between these. So we're gonna real quick talk about stitch length. From here, this is one millimeter stitch length up to seven millimeter stitch length. And you can really see the differences here. Um, these little tiny baby stitches and these big stitches. The six and the seven, those are to serve as basting stitches. I would not quilt with those. I typically stay between a two and a three while I'm quilting, but use your discretion and do what you'd like. Keep in mind, if you use a one, it's gonna take you forever to quilt the quilt. <laughs> but this is just a quick guideline as to stitch length and what you can choose. So last week we talked about some of the different quilting designs we can create with our walking foot. As you can see, I created all of these little samples. It's all the same four block square, but depending on the type of quilting that you choose, it really makes a difference in the overall aesthetics of your quilt. And each design kind of has its pros and cons. We're gonna talk about five different types of quilting that you can do that's super simple. I'm gonna walk you through each and then I'm gonna kind of share the pros and cons of each. So to begin stitching in the ditch, the first thing that we're gonna do is start on the edge of our quilt, just past our quilt top. And we're gonna start and then back stitch to continue forward. I'm going to take the middle of my walking foot and line it up directly in between my seam going right down the middle of my quilt. So this is definitely something that you have to take your time with because it can be easy to get off track. As you can see, I'm just taking my time. I'm keeping my needle in between my seams and I'm gonna go all the way down until the end. Once I get to the end, I'm gonna back stitch again and then cut my threads. So from here, I'm gonna turn my work to the right and I'm gonna do the same thing against the other way. So you're gonna repeat this through all of the seams on your quilt. This is the stitching in the ditch that I just showed you. And when we press our seams, um, when we're done with our quilt top, you can see that one of one side of the seam is a little bit taller than the other. I wish I could demonstrate that better. Um, nope, okay. The idea with this is we're tucking our stitches into the smaller of the two sides and they almost disappear. You don't even see, I mean, you can clearly see we have some stitches, but they kind of slip in here. And I've got a little farther over here. I'm also using white thread against blue so you can kind of see, but this is kind of a cool option. This is, this is more minimalist quilting. You don't have to do a whole lot. You can just follow the seams and then you're done. Next, we are gonna talk about straight line quilting. Some walking feet that you will see will have this hole in the back and it fits this kind of arm attachment and you can set it in here and you can measure. So if I wanted to create, you know, one and a half inch lines, I would lay this down and I can see that my needle, which would be right in between where these two points come together, my needle would be right here. So I can kind of move this and know how far apart my stitches would be. So this would be, these would be about two inch lines. And then I could move it into about one and a half inch lines. So this doesn't move. And if I create one single pass on my quilt, then I can move over and have this guide follow my previously stitched line. So then I'm just creating these lines over and over. So this is a pretty cool attachment. If you are shopping for a walking foot and you see this, I would definitely purchase this if you wanna do straight line quilting. My current sewing machine does not have this. That's why I'm showing you this example. If your sewing machine doesn't have the option to have that attachment that I was just showing you, a hair marker is the next best thing or any kind of a sharp edge 
that you can use and you can actually create the quilting lines yourself and they disappear, they're not staying on your quilt. Or if you really want to make some lines on your quilt, go for a water soluble marker and I actually like the Mark Begon, which is here. This is my favorite kind. I have used this blue Mark Begon for years and years. Here's another hair marker. You can use this to use your ruler and then kind of create these creases in your quilt that you could follow while you're quilting. So that's one option if you don't have that attachment. I decide I want to do straight line quilting. I actually just use my quilting foot as a guide. So starting and stopping exactly like we did before. I'm gonna use my um, quilting foot on the edge here and just create one straight line. I'm gonna start back up at the top and just repeat the last line that I did, but I'm gonna use my walking foot as a guide again. And then I'm just gonna repeat this all the way down. time consuming especially if you have a bigger quilt. So here we have our straight line quilts all finished and one of my favorite things about this design is actually the back and how cool it looks. It definitely gives it a different kind of texture. Um, this isn't my favorite way to quilt just because I don't have the attachment to my walking foot so my lines are never perfectly straight and over the grand scheme of things you can't really tell unless you're looking really closely but it's not really my favorite, but I think it definitely gives it a different kind of look and it's very unique. And if you have the time to do it, I think it's definitely something to think about. This is a great, it's a great option. So building off of the last design that we just learned, we're gonna do some waves. And I know you think walking foot, straight line quilting, which is what we've discussed up until now, but I'm gonna show you how to easily create a different kind of dimension with your walking foot to get some waves without having to free motion quilt. We're going to start with a straight line and we're going to slowly kind of move our piece back and forth. And then we're going to start back in the end. So we've got our first little wavy line. So you can either copy your last line and mirror it all the way down your quilt but I think an even cooler design is to kind of um, get a little crazy and make different size lines and they go and they don't copy each other. There's no way, shape, or form. They're just kind of free flowing. If you want to do one closer and get them a little farther apart, that's kind of cool too. Sometimes they can even cross over each other. So I'm gonna finish up these wavy lines. I'm gonna meet you back here. So here we are with our wavy lines. And I think this is a really cool option if you're kind of in a hurry, <laughs> which sounds funny, um, but it really gives it some depth and dif different dimension. And it's really neat to see all of these are pieced exactly the same but each of them kind of gets a different kind of flow with the different quilting styles that you choose. So I really enjoy this pattern. There's no way, shape, or form to it. You can just kind of cruise and go on autopilot and just kind of move your quilt around as you see fit. Next, we're gonna talk about cross quilting. So to do this, we are going to take our quilting foot. We're gonna look at the left side here and we're gonna line it up with our seam and we're gonna follow it all the way down. So we're gonna start and stop like we have the other designs, but we're just gonna follow along this seam all the way down to the end. Once you get to the end, we need to repeat this with the other side of our seam. So you can either take your quilting foot and line up the right side to the right side of the seam and repeat the last step, or you can turn your quilt around completely Usually, I will go all the way down my quilt, quilting on one side of the seam, and then turn my work around and then quilt on the other side of the seam just to be consistent. Once we've completed our stitch lines on both sides of our seam all the way down our quilt, we're going to turn and we're going to repeat this process with the other side of the seam.
So our quilting lines come together to create this cross in the middle that's really neat. So the last design we're going to talk about um, with our walking foot is actually diagonal quilting. And you can do this one of two ways. You can either trust your machine, just kind of let it guide you into making a straight line, or you can use the harem marker that we talked about earlier. But basically we're going to start quilting exactly the same and we're going to run diagonal lines all the way down our quilt. So a trick here, if you don't want to go through the trouble of marking your quilt, which I never do because I'm lazy, we've discussed this, the middle of your walking foot right here has this little gap. And I kind of use that as an invisible guideline and I kind of keep that lined up with the center of my, of my seams. So I'm gonna go straight across, hitting exactly in the middle of this seam and all the way down. And you could either You can either do this only in one direction all the way down your quilt, or you can choose to go in both directions and kind of make X's all along your quilt. I think both are very neat and good options. So you can choose whichever you like. So I have kind of a confession to make. <laughs> I went into this quilting series with the cross quilting design in mind for my finished quilt. That's what I've always done with this quilt layout. Um, I've always done the cross quilting. That's been one of my favorites. But in the process of showing you all of these different designs, I think I'm gonna go with the waves. I think I really liked the movement and I'm gonna do something a little different and I'm excited. So let me know in the comment box below which design that you decided for your quilt or what you're the most excited to try out. Check the description box below for a link to my blog post for this week to get some tips for quilting bigger quilts. Here's a quick rundown of some different ideas, but definitely check that post. One of the main things that I'd like you to take away from this week is don't get discouraged. If you think things aren't looking quite right and you're wondering why, and you think your whole quilt is messed up, I promise you your quilt is going to be beautiful. Just finish it. No one's gonna see those little minute details unless you point them out. So don't, definitely don't point out your mistakes to people. They're kind of your kept secret. So I, I am all finished quilting the quilt top and I'm loving how it's looking. This is something different that I usually don't do. So I am excited. Thank you for joining me this week for part five. Join me for part six if you're interested in free motion quilting. We're gonna kind of do the same setup that we did today, but we're gonna do it with a free motion quilting foot. And I'm gonna show you kind of a beginner's guide on how to free motion quilt. I could probably fit all of that information into an entire series, but I'm gonna try to sum it up into one part. So if you are looking forward to free motion quilting, definitely meet me back here next Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for notifications for more. Leave a comment below, let me know how your quilt's going, let me know if you've got any questions that I have not answered for part seven that'll be our last time together and we're gonna learn how to square up our quilt after quilting and then how to bind if you've used your walking foot to quilt your quilt skip the free motion part and I will see you for part seven